Hi, this is Mark from ITCU Solutions. <clears throat> and today I just want to go over how to set up your DMARC records for your email server. And the DMARC record is really three different DNS records. The first is the SPF for sending policy framework record. This is just the record that allows the rec receiving email servers to know that the addr IP address that they're receiving the email from is actually valid. The second one is the domain keys identified mail record, the DCAM record. Um, when your email server signs mail and uh, creates a hash with a private key and sends it to a receiving email server, the DCAM record is really the public key that you put up in DNS so that that receiving email server can use that public key to decrypt that hash to validate that your email server is the one that actually sent the email. And the third type of record is the DMARC record. And the DMARC record is just your record that lets the receiving email servers know what to do in case there's an issue with the SPF or DKIM records, if one, one or both of those fail. And it also allows, tells the receiving email servers where to send that reporting to. And just as a caution, if you have a lot of uh, different email domains, but you want the reporting from those receiving email centers to all be sent to one email account that's on a domain that's outside of the domains where the emails are coming from, you'll have to go to that domain that's receiving the reports, the DNS of that domain, and add an authorization record. And that's just a record that says, yes, I will accept reports, uh, DMARC reports from any mail server for this particular email domain. So we'll, we'll go over how to do that. In this example, I'm just using uh, basically the GoDaddy DNS. We're going to use that for this demonstration. And also, since I'm a smarter mail administrator, we're going to go over how to sign smarter mail email because that will produce our DCAM record for us. And then we'll just test out all these records on MS Toolbox. So let's do it real quick. OK, so here you see is my the domain I'm using is caringbless.com. It's one of the uh, domains we happen to own. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my SPF record. And there is such thing as a DNS SPF record. As far as I know, no one uses that. When you do this, you, use, you do this by adding a text record. And then inside the text record, you tell it it's actually an SPF record. So to do that, uh, we select the type of record as text. The name, we're just going to do the whole domain because we're doing this for all of CaringBliss.com if you're sending email from CaringBliss. But under the value, we have to tell it that it's an SPF record. So what you do is you say, yes, this is SPF record. Whoops. And we'll tell it which version. And then uh, MX record. Now, you can tell it, uh, if you want to restrict this by IPv4 or v6, you do this in some other way. But um, if you're doing it by IPv4, you can just say IPv4, and you can just, I'm just going to make up an IP here. You can just tell it, uh, you know, what your IP address is of your sending email server. And if you have more than one IP, you can just, you know, do this over and over again. Just put a space and do IPv4 again and put in another record. Um, I use, we use uh, Barracuda as our spam filter, so we send our email through it a, as, a, as our gateway. Um, so in our case, for example, Barracuda has so many sending emails, it's not practical to do this and go put every IP address in there. So if you're using something like a spam service like Barracuda, what you want to do is add the actual domain name, which allows the email servers just to look up the variable IP addresses out there. And you do that by just doing include uh, whatever the domain is. In my case, this is going to be for Barracuda. So we're going to type barracudanetworks.com. And I'm just going to tell it uh, the dash all basically is saying restrict it only to these two things. So either the IP address or if it's one of the IPs that is looked up under barracudanetworks.com. Uh, you don't have to use dash all. You could do something else. 
uh, but generally that's probably what you're going to put in there because you want to restrict you want to make sure that those email receiving servers know not to accept email from something not in this record okay I'm just going to pick one hour because I want this to update very fairly quickly so that's how you do your SPF record the next record we're going to do I'm going to actually go to my uh, I'm logged in as the domain administrator on SmarterMail and to do email signing in SmarterMail you go to your domain settings and you're just going to go to general and you'll see you have a uh, email signing uh, card here and so when you enable this this is going to bring up what you need to add to your DNS to enable it but I'm just going to go over the settings real quick now the only time you'll probably go into the settings is if for some reason you want to increase your key size I wouldn't recommend changing the conicization um, relax basically just means if email servers are out there are making minor changes that uh, that's okay that that won't cause a problem with the signing if you change it to standard that's or simple I mean that's just going to make it a little more strict uh, so I wouldn't recommend doing that either so we're just going to leave uh, settings alone for now and so we're just going to go to enable it and this is going to generate the DKIM key that we now need to add to our DNS so I'm just going to grab this guy the text record and then I'll go back to my DNS and we're just going to add another text record all these are going to be text records by the way and so for the name okay so it knows it's a DKIM record we're putting that in and then for the value we'll go back and just grab the key because this is really this is telling it's DKIM and it's given us that public key okay Again, I'm going to do an hour. We'll add the record. And because if I add that, if I uh, go back here and I say close too early, if that DCAM record isn't in there, it will cause a problem with smarter mail sometimes. So I'm going to add my DMARC record while I'm waiting for that to update. It's pretty quick, so it'd probably be okay, but this will give us just a couple minutes. So the DMARC record is also going to be a text record. And for a DMARC, you're just going to do underscore DMARC, like so. And for your value on this guy, you, the first thing you have to do is just tell it the version whoops, of DMARC. So that's V equals DMARC. So we're just going to be using version 1. And the next part is going to be the policy. So this is, uh, you're going to tell the receiving mail server is what you want to do. I usually use quarantine. You can tell it to reject your emails um, if you really want to. You can also, I believe, you can put in end and that in theory will tell the receiving mail servers not to do anything. Uh, for a lot of things like the services we have, I've had problems with doing that where they it still won't accept it. They want some type of policy, either quarantine or reject. So I usually put in quarantine. and. Uh, the next thing is just the type of DMARC failures you want to report. Uh, by default, the way this works is, by default, it's a AND statement, so you have to have a failure with your SPF and your DKIM statement in order for it to send you a report. They actually recommend uh, that you uh, do an either or, so if you have a problem with either the DKIM or the SPF record that you have a report sent and to do that you do uh, you just put an FO equals one and what that's doing is it's making it an either or there's other things you can do um, there's a FO equals D and S the zero is the default where it's going to be that and again uh, but if you need to, if you want to do something besides for what is recommended you can look up uh, the commands for this the next thing I'm going to do is RUA is basically telling the receiving email server where to send the report to. So I'm going to put in RUA and so I'm going to say mail to and the account I have set up is support at itsolutions.com 
And you'll notice that ITC Solutions is not in the same email domain because uh, this is for caringbliss.com. So I'm going to have to put in an authorization record in the ITC Solutions DNS. I've already done that, but I'll show you the record here in a second. So I'll add the record. Okay, so you'll see for this email domain, we have all three records we need. For the domain, we're telling, we gave it the SPF, we're telling it what are the valued uh, email servers to receive from. We have our public key created from the DKIM so it, the receiving uh, server can decrypt the hash. And then we're telling the receiving server, hey, if you have a problem with either the uh, DKIM or the SPF record, I want a report sent to support at itcusolutions.com. Now I'm going to go back to my finish my email signing, hit close. Okay, the mere reason that worked, that probably tells me my DKIM record is correct. Um, and then, the, so also so you know, I'm just going to show you the, um, or maybe I don't have it here. Okay, so this is the record I threw in my ITC Solutions DNS. This is the authorization record. And this is also a text record. And basically what it's saying is uh, for caringbliss.com, if there's a report for a DMARC report, that's DMARC 1, which you saw in our other DMARC record, we were using version 1. Go ahead and accept that. Okay, that's the other record that I had to add. And so let's go see if all this works. So we're going to go into MX Toolbox. If you go into the Super Tool and you select DMARC, look up this will let you test to see if this is working and just put in your domain and boom it all works uh, so you can see that the DMARC is published correct everything looks good here okay that's for that's an old one there because I tried this earlier that's why I'm getting nothing uh, but you can see everything's good the records value the records found all external domains you're doing a record are given permission this is that uh, record that I put in the ITC solutions that says yes I'll receive that so everything's good if you have any questions about how to do this uh, put them in the comments down below but hopefully this is helpful for anyone setting this up uh, if you have some other type of email server like exchange you probably just need to look up how to uh, set up your email signing to create that DKIM record but otherwise every th all the steps here should be exactly the same even though I'm using smarter mail and again, if you have any questions, uh, leave in the comments below. I, ho I hope this was helpful. Have a great day.